level land, so I had to dig out all of this area, clear out all the weeds, fell a tree, then dig the land flat. Then I put down half logs on the bottom, all the way to the back, about this sort of distance apart. And then put down big boards on top of that, which keeps you off the ground, which keeps sort of a layer of air and keeps the warmth and stops the damp coming through and things like that. And then, um, you don't have to have a door, but I put the door in place and that was so that I could build the frame around the door. Then you have to sledge in a metal bar, so here, make a hole, stick your big coppiced bit of ash or hazel in, and then bend it over maybe over your back. If someone gets it at the other side, brings it down, holds it there, and then you put another pole in and bend that over the other way, and you can kind of wind them round each other a bit and then tie them on and then you've got an arch and you do arch, arch, arch and then this way arch, arch, arch and diagonals. When you do the diagonals you've got your triangles and every place where a pole crosses you latch it together so when you've got all these triangles in the structure it becomes really strong. So this now you can walk all over the top of it, it's just really solid. And then um, first layer on top of the the frame, you put sort of nice looking white or patterned cloth, then blankets, then duvets, and this is all sheep's wool in um, cotton, which was made for a year, but they didn't want it anymore. So it was like this much insulation over the whole thing. So where did you get all the duvets from then? Um, from Glastonbury Festival. At the end of the festival, everyone leaves all their stuff everywhere. So I collected up about 45 roll mats and had this big roll mat which I kind of carried back to a friend's van and uh, on the floor in here the so the you've got the floorboards and then a layer of roll mat everywhere so roll mat roll mat roll mat all the way over the whole space then coconut matting and then carpet and then rugs so there's like you know this much insulation on the floor as well so the whole space is very well insulated and they're comfy so this is where you live yeah. all the mud cottons Water, kettle, teapot, and a fire to keep you cosy. The rice. Okay, so how long do you leave that for? Um, it's an hour, it says on the hay books, I think it's an hour for an hour and a half. Or Is it? And what, yeah, boil it for five minutes? Yeah. Yeah, so for rice, boil for five minutes, hour, hour and a half. But if you leave it longer, it's just. Uh, it's burn, obviously. Mm. Yeah, it's great, you can't, you can't burn things. You can't right. burn it just gets softer and softer and softer. <laughs> and softer. Oh, wow. So that will be ready for lunch. Okay. Rocket, rocket stove. So you have uh, some embers in the bottom, put some thin dry holes down in the top and uh, they'll all catch and then lock up the hole at the bottom. And the air will accelerate through and come out through the top. Oh, goodness, I've got a pan in here. 
So then the fire and the heat goes all up the side and the bottom of the pan and it heats it very quickly and it means we don't have to use big bits of wood, we can use all the coppice which grows, so we don't have to cut down big trees and um, it's just very quick and uh, uses very little wood in comparison to a big fire. And what's the griffin made from? Uh, made from cob. So mm -hmm. fire bricks make up the, uh, the chambers mm -hmm. and then it's covered in cob which is a mixture of sand, clay yeah, and mud and straw. And you just slap it on, it's just mm -hmm. really kind of malleable and then make it into a sculpture. Wow. Yeah. So a cooking, really a cooking stove then? Yeah. So this is going to be a market garden. Um, Chris is going to be expanding this patch a little down that way. Um, just growing in the old fashioned traditional style. Um, and the food will be used for events here and sold to the community so that we don't have to buy food in from elsewhere. So he's kind of taking it on as a little business within the community. Uh, at the moment this is all um, green manure seed which has been sown which covers the land um, with nitrogen fixing plants and stops weeds and grass growing up over the winter. Um, and then come the beginning of spring you dig it all in and it rots into the soil and makes it very fertile. So what's the bird cage? It's a bit of sculpture. Yeah? When was that built then? A few years ago, and they put they went into a town centre with it and did some performance art inside inside the bird cage in the middle of a town. Solar thermal water heating panel. So in the summer, when it's nice and sunny and hot, that provides all the hot water, um, and in the winter, it kind of keeps it lukewarm. German electric log boiler. Um, so this is a special burner with different chambers. We fill this top one up with wood to the top, and it's got a fan which sucks the gases down into this bottom chamber and burns them, making the wood something like 300% times, 300% more efficient um, than it would be in another boiler. And then it heats up this, which is four and a half tonnes of water. Um, that's, absolutely, that's absolutely enormous, isn't it? And there's two of those, isn't there? Yeah. And so, that gets pumped round under the floor in the barn. So we're talking about... Um, 2,200 litres in each of each of those. So that's a that's a bit like a thermal store then, really. The, the logs burn, they create create the heat, heat the water up, and then that becomes a thermal store. Yeah. If you burn, if you burn this down, maybe three or four times with good wood, um, then that can last you five days of heat in a very very large space. Okay, so that keeps this space over here. So this is the hall, is it? Where the, the, barn, where the yeah. barn with the underfloor heating. It's just in the middle of a big sort-out, so it's in the middle there. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we do events and things in here.